Now it's the first day in a long time that I've felt like sculpting. And uh, first thing I'm going to do is redo the fringe. I don't like the fringe. It looks too muddled. And uh, it looks like it's wet instead of uh, loose. So I'm going to change that. Mind you, you have to keep uh, all the fringe together. You can't have any empty areas. Alright, I'm going to continue to work on this and I'll be back. Okay, I'm done with the uh, fringe. <coughs> I'll uh, continue to line it up a little bit and try to get it more compatible to mold making. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a uh, quill patch or a strip to go down there and uh, I won't need to make it for there because that's all covered up and <coughs> not sure what I'm going to do up here I don't want to make it too elaborate because quite honestly uh, their everyday clothing probably wouldn't have been as highly decorated as those that you would wear for uh, special occasions. 
Um, gonna put some uh, hair uh, fringe on his shirt, uh, indicating he's a leader. So let's get busy with that. I'm going to, since I'm not gonna put anything in, underneath the shirt, I'm just gonna have that shirt kind of billowing out there. Sure, it sounds like the wind's blowing outside. It's uh, in the 50s, so it's not too bad. The reason I decided not to put uh, the rifle, this particular rifle, the butt of the rifle would have been <coughs> sticking too far out and would have interfered with his arm. And uh, I decide, decided to, uh, I mean, I could cut the, the stock down, um, but it didn't add anything to the... Uh, the total design. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a bow quiver on the uh, ground. It's, you know, following the story that he's come out of his teepee where he's grabbed his weapons and shield and everything because of a, an attack on his village. And he hasn't put the quiver on yet. He's get he will do that in a, a moment, but uh, for now it'll make a nice design for the base. Um, I'm going to reposition this strap and put it coming from underneath his arm instead of over his hand. I don't know. I might just leave it the way it is. But uh, anyway, so I, that's why I had to uh, redo the front of his shirt because now I don't have anything coming out from under the shirt. And uh, distorting the shape of the shirt. first roll out the clay and I put it through the pasta machine each row about that wide. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about when I say quill work, uh, before they had beads, the Native Americans would uh, get the quills from a uh, porcupine and uh, boil them, soften them, and then uh, using sinew they would, or they would dye them first in some kind of earth dye, and uh, then they would flatten them and uh, sew them 
into strips. It's quite complicated and uh, that's why whenever you buy quill work it's very expensive because <coughs> the uh, work that's involved in doing it Okay, now I'm just going to indicate quills, and that's just going to be a flat. Scribble on the uh, clay. All right, there we go. I just put it on the edge of the... Uh, All right, I'm going to continue doing this, uh, and I'll come back when I'm done. All right, I'm done for the day. I've got uh, the beadwork, or the uh, quill work, on his legging, as you can see there, on his shoulder. And, uh, ah, get this turned around here. And on that shoulder and on that arm, I still have to get it on the other arm. I'll do that tomorrow. But uh, it's uh, getting close to being done. And I've got the uh, feathers to attach to the headdress, but uh, that'll come. All right. Good night, everybody.